back in the seas, those creatures with the stiffening rod in their bodies had strengthened it by encasing it in bone. A skull developed with a hinged jaw that could grab and hold on to prey. They grew bigger and developed fins equipped with muscles that enabled them to swim with speed and power. So fish now dominated the waters of the world. One group of them developed the ability to gulp air from the water surface. Their fleshy fins became weight-supporting legs, and 375 million years ago, a few of these backbone creatures followed the insects onto the land. They were amphibians with wet skins, and they had to return to water to lay their eggs. But some of their descendants evolved dry, scaly skins and broke their link with water by laying eggs with watertight shells. These creatures, the reptiles, were the ancestors of today's tortoises, snakes, lizards, and crocodiles. And of course, they included the group that, back then, came to dominate the land, the dinosaurs. But 65 million years ago, a great disaster overtook the Earth. Whatever its cause, a great proportion of animals were exterminated. All the dinosaurs disappeared except for one branch, whose scales had become modified into feathers. They were the birds. While they spread through the skies, a small, seemingly insignificant group of survivors began to increase in numbers on the ground beneath. These creatures differed from their competitors in that their bodies were warm and insulated with coats of fur. They were the first mammals. With much of the land left vacant after the great catastrophe, they now had their chance. Their warm, insulated bodies enabled them to be active at all times, at night as well as during the day, and in all places, from the Arctic to the tropics, in water as well as on land, on grassy plains and up in the trees. <laughs>